Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. I have already covered how to create web server using ESP8266 and SDM32. In that tutorial, we were able to blink the LED on the SDM32 using ESP8266. This is another tutorial, which uses web server, but this time we will actually transfer some data. This data transfer will be in both the directions. Let's start by creating the project in Cube IDE. I am using STM32 F446RE. Give some name to the project, and click Finish. In the Cube MX, first of all I am selecting the external HSE crystal for the main clock. Now, the ESP is connected to the UART1, so we need to enable it. I am leaving the board rate to 115200. Also, make sure that you have enabled the interrupt. Now the clock setup. I have 8 MHz crystal, and I want to run the system at maximum clock. Click save to generate this project. Regarding the connection, just connect the RX of ESP to the TX of the MCU, and vice versa. Also connect the CHPD pin to the VCC, as shown in the picture. Here is our project. Let's first copy the library files. You can find these files in the source and include folders, after downloading the code. These libraries are basically for the ring buffer, and some ESP related functions. Let's take a look at the ESP data handler file. But before that, the UART ring buffer file. Here you need to define the UART, that you are using. Now we need to copy this function, and put it in the interrupt file. Also, we need to change the default interrupt handler, with the one that we have in ring buffer file. These are functions present in the ring buffer. These all are all the old functions, except this one here. This is the new one I have added. Get data from buffer. Let's see its description. This function copies the data from the buffer. The data that we want to copy, lies between the start string, and the end string. Buffer to copy from, and buffer to copy into, are self-explanatory. That's the only addition in ring buffer. Now let's see the ESP data handler. Here also, we need to define the UART handler, which is connected to the ESP. The maximum number of user data, that you want to store. User detail is basically a structure, which contains first name, last name, and the age of the user. You can add more elements here, or change the structure to something useful for your purpose.
this is just a function to find, how many users data is collected so far. Here I have defined the string, from the HTML format. I have included the HTML file also, in case you want to see the details. This part here, covers the home page. This is for page 1, which will be called after we submit the data. And this is for viewing the data. This at the bottom, is the table syntax that I have used to format the data, so that it looks organized. Basically, this is how the home page looks. This is page 1. And this is page 2, which looks a little messed up right now, but it will be fine, once we load the data. Now let's see the function ESP in it. These are some AT commands, that we need to send to the ESP, in order to set it for the web server. First of all, initialize the ring buffer. Then reset the ESP. AT is sent to confirm that it's working, and sending the response back. CW mode equals 1 will set the ESP to station mode. Now we will set a static IP address. AT plus SIP STA is used to do that. The IP address is the part of the parameter of ESP in it. CW JAP will make the ESP to join the provided SSID. We don't need to query for the IP address, since we are already using static IP. Turn on the multiple connections, and start the server at port 80. This is all for the initialization part. Now let's see the server start. Here, first we will get the link number of the request made by the browser. This is because, we will have to send the data to the same link number. If the browser made the request about page 1, that means the data needs to be submitted, this function will copy the data from the browser, and store it into the structure. And then call the server handle to handle the request. This is basically this page right here. In case of any other request, it will simply call the server handle to handle that request. Let's see the server handle now. If the request is made about page 2, that is the view data page, then it will first calculate how many of the user's data has been collected. It will then copy that data from the structure, format it in HTML code, along with the table syntax, and send it to the server. In case the request is made about any other page, the respective HTML code will be sent to the server. That's all regarding the ESP data handler, now let's write the program. First of all, include the ESP data handler.h file. Now in the main function, we will initialize the ESP. Here the parameters are SSID, password, and the IP address, that you want to set. In the while loop, call the server start. Do not give any delay here. Build the code. We don't have any errors, let's debug it. Let's run it. You can see the rx buffer here, our last command got executed. 
It will take around 4 to 5 seconds for the initialization. Let's open the browser, and go to the IP address. So, we got our home page. Before entering any data, let's view the data. As expected, there is nothing here. I will enter information for some users. Let's view the data now. Here we have all the information that I entered. Let's enter one more time. And the new one is also added. I have set the maximum number of users as 10, so the 11th user's data will override the first data. So, as you saw, we can receive and send data to the web server using STM32. You can use the same logic for sending ADC values, or some temperature values, or receiving some PWM values to control the fan etc. This is it for this video. I hope you understood the procedure. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day.